Welcome to the Solving Polynomials Review. All right, so we're going to solve some polynomials together. And um, what I'd like you to do is pause the tape uh, periodically uh, when I ask you to and uh, see if you can choose with me which method I'm going to use. And um, you can also solve these problems with me if you had trouble with the whiteboard practice. And you can turn those in for the whiteboard practice problems. All right, so let's look at our first one. We have 2x to the fifth plus 24x equals 14x cubed. Uh, anytime um, your equation is not in standard form, meaning all of the terms, uh, all of the terms on one side uh, set equal to zero in descending order, you need to make sure you do that first. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is, add, is subtract 14x cubed from both sides so that we have everything, all of our x terms on one side. And we want to put that x cubed before the x. So now we have tw uh, 2x to the fifth minus 14x cubed plus 24x equals 0. Our terms are now in descending order. Which method do you think I'm going to use to start solving this? Okay, so pause the tape, choose your method, and see if you chose the same as me. Okay, if you chose... Factor out the greatest common factor. You are correct. We should do that first. So we're going, I'm actually I'm going to do that on the next page. So I have a little bit more space. Okay, so I'm going to pull out a everybody's divisible by 2, and all of our terms have an x. So I'm going to pull out a 2x, and I'll be left with x uh, to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12. Okay, well now I have to solve this one. I've got one of my factors. One of my factors, I'll put it down here, is 2x and set that equal to 0. Uh, now I need to find the other one, so I need to choose a new, new solving technique because I don't have any more greatest common factors. All right, so um, pause the tape, choose your method, and then check back. Hey, okay, welcome back. Um, which method would I choose? Well, I can't factor out the greatest common factor. I don't have four terms, uh, and uh, there's not much in common between those, so factor by grouping won't work. So that leaves me division and substitution. Um, either one of these will work. I'm going to use division on this one. Um, and uh, it will use division on this one. And maybe we'll use substitution on a later one. All right, so we have x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12. All right, so we'll set that equal to 0. Now, to do uh, division, I'm going to use synthetic division. Uh, we can't be missing anybody. We're missing the x cubed. And we're also missing the x. All right, so let's put those values in. All right, now we can use synthetic division. So I have 1, 0. We just list our coefficients if we're going to use synthetic division. All right, and now I have to choose which, which, uh, what I want to divide by. Always do your rational root test when you're um, using synthetic, long or synthetic division to solve by. You don't need to do that for substitution, factor, out of greatest common factor, factor by grouping. Um, because we don't have to, um, you know, narrow down a choice to choose. Um, but you should always do that with division. So here's our possible solutions. Remember, they are the factor, the factors of our constant, just factors of that last number there, divided by factors of the leading coefficient. And so our constant term is 12. And its factors are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. Factors of our leading coefficient, that's 1, so plus or minus 1. Um, so we have exact, all the same numbers again. So these numbers here represent the possible solutions. So we'll have to choose one of them. Um, hopefully I'll choose wisely and we'll have to do synthetic division too many times. But I don't remember what the answer to this one is either. So um, it'll be a surprise for both of us. Um, I think, well, let's say I've got a 1 and negative 7. I'm going to choose 
4. I want something a little bit larger than 1. Since I got a 7 in there and a 12, I'm trying to get rid of those two numbers. All right, so we'll bring down the first term, 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Add, we get 4. Oh, I think I maybe chose too large. 4 times 4 is 16. If I add, I get uh, 9. Oh, way too large. And I add, oh, that wasn't a good choice. Not 4. How about 2? Maybe 2. Not that large. Or maybe negative 4. Uh, let's try, so no to 4. Let's try 2. 1, 2, uh, 2, 4. Ah, that was a better choice. Um, yep, that'll be a better choice. I forgot about those zeros having to multiply, you know, so I'm still multiplying even though it's a zero there. I'm bringing down a two, and so my number four got a little bit too large, but I think this is going to be good. Negative three, negative three times two is a negative six. Add negative six. Ah, that was the right choice. So now we have, um, this would be x squared plus two x, oops, x cubed, I meant to say x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x uh, minus 6. And now we can solve this one. So now we've got one solution is x equals 0. I'm going to extend the page a little bit. Because um, if 2x is equal to 0, you divide both sides by 2, and x is equal to 0 as well. We have a second solution. I was going to try to make that look a little bit nicer, but that's okay. We have a second solution that we got using synthetic division, x equals 2. We need two more solutions. I think we can, I know which method I want to use to solve this. Um, you could use synthetic division again, but I think I'm going to use factor by grouping. I see I got my 1 and 2, 3 and 6 is twice as large as 3. I think that's going to work. So x cubed plus 2x squared plus negative 3x minus 6 equals 0. And now, uh, so the first two become a group, the second two become a group. Make sure there's a plus between them. Uh, and then we pull out a common factor. So we'll pull out the x squared. We're left with an x plus 2. And we can pull out a negative 3. And we're left with an x plus 2. Uh, that worked out pretty good. So we have x squared minus 3 and x plus 2 when we factor. We'll set those equal to zero, and we'll have our last uh, last two solutions there. Oh, excuse me, we have to have five solutions. That was the fifth power. The synthetic division w was an equation to the fourth power. The original equation, if you remember, up here, if I can get that to scroll, was to the, maybe, maybe, fifth power. It's to the fifth power. All right, so we will... Um, Expect five solutions. So here, if x plus 2 is 0, uh, x equals negative 2. Now, the x squared minus 3 equal to 0, this one isn't factorable. Um, 3 is not, this is not a difference of squares. 3 is not a perfect square. So this one we'll solve using square roots. So x squared is equal to 3. And don't forget, when we take the square root, we need to take plus or minus the square root. And that doesn't simplify. So our last two solutions are x equals square root of 3 and negative square root of 3. And now we have all of our solutions, all five of them. Okay. The, when we did the rational root test, these two rational ones were choices. Um, obviously, the square roots of 3s weren't. Um, and the 0 we pulled out before we did the rational root test. And you wouldn't do a rational root test if you don't have a constant term. So I hope you followed along with this one. OK. Um, so we used, if we go back to the beginning here. Well, it took us a long time, nine minutes, not that long. We pulled out the greatest common factor. We did synthetic division. Then we did factor by grouping. And then we solved using a square root. We did, all, we did four methods there. That's a pretty powerful problem there. We had to use four methods to solve it. The next one might not take us as long. Okay, so choose a solving technique. All right, so pause the tape for a second. 
choose your method and then come right back. Hey, welcome back. Which method did you choose? Well, I'm choosing division. I can't really do factor by grouping. I don't see a pattern here. Um, there's too many terms for substitution. The exponents aren't correct. And I can't do pull out greatest common factor because there is none. So division is the way to go. Let's do our rational root test. So factors of our constant term. over the factors of our leading coefficient. Oops, kind of went to the word factors. So that gives us um, the factors of 12 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. Factors of 1, of course, are plus or minus 1. So our possible, our possible roots are just the factors of 12. And that's because our leading coefficient is just a 1. All right, so we'll use synthetic division again. We write down the um, coefficients to use synthetic division. 1, 2, negative 11, and negative 12. What to choose? Well, last time I chose too large. Let's choose something small, I guess. Um, let's, let's go with a 2 again. That was lucky for last time. We bring down the 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Add, we get 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Add, we get negative 3. And this one's not lucky. Negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. And that's not large enough. Let's choose a 4. Oops. I'm just going to erase uh, the, the previous one so I don't use up all the space. So 2 was a no. So 4. 4 and 1, 2, negative 11, negative 12. Bring down the 1. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 4. Oh, but this was not a good choice either. 6, 24. Oh, no. Because a le negative 24 minus 11 is going to give us 13. And 13 times 4 is a lot larger than 12. <laughs> 3. 2 is too small. 4 is too large. Let's try 3. 1, 2, negative 11, negative 12. 1, 1 times 3 is 3. Add, we get 5. This might work. 5 times 3 is 15. Add, we get... 4. 4 times 3 is 12, and we get 0. That one worked out well. Alright, so there's one of our factors is x equals 3. Now we can factor the rest. x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. So 1 times 4 is 4. Multiplies to give us 4. Adds to give us our b term. This is the a times c part. This is the b. Adds to give us our b term of 5. Well, that would be 4 and 1 and 4 and 1. So we have x squared plus x plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. And the first two are a group and the second two are a group. And we pull out the x and we have an x plus 1. Pull out the 4. We have an x plus 1. And so factor that would be x plus 4 and x plus 1. We set them equal to 0. Oops, I think it's a 4. If x plus 4 equals 0, then x is negative 4. I chose positive 4. I should have chosen negative 4. And if x plus 1 equals 0, x is negative 1. So there's the rest of our solutions. x equals negative 1. x equals 3. We found the 4. And x equals negative 4. And notice they're all in our list over here of possible solutions. I think I have four problems for us. And two, two done. And two to go, and um, this is our next one. I think I have two more. Two more. All right, so um, 9x to the fourth minus 226x squared plus 25. And you might be looking at that and going, ah, I don't know what to do. Those numbers are so big. 
All right, so choose which method you think we're going to use, and then come right back. Welcome back. I don't have a greatest common factor. I can't use that one. I don't try to get it to four terms when it's to the fourth power. Um, it's a little, I mean, it, you could do it, but and have like a fourth and, and squares as your middle term, but I think it's a little messy. I would just use probably division instead. However, let's try substitution. All right, so we have 9x to the 4th minus 226x squared plus 25. When we use substitution, we're going to let w equal x squared. And so if w equals x squared, w squared would equal x squared squared, which is x to the 4th. So everywhere I see a x to the 4th, I'm going to put a w squared. And everywhere I see an x squared, I'm going to put a w. So I have 9w squared minus 226w plus 25. And now we're just going to do factor, you know, our factor by grouping like we normally do with quadratic. So 9 times 25, that's our a times c, is equal to 225. Because right? 8 times 25, if you had 8 quarters, that would be $2, that's 200, and add one more quarter, 225. Um, so we need two numbers that multiply to give us 225, and add to give us our B term of negative 226. Well, now that you figured out what A times C is, I hope you don't have too much trouble figuring out it's going to be negative 225 and negative 1. <laughs> that would uh, work here. And so uh, once, you, once you figure out um, your A times C and your B, you see, oh, this wasn't really that hard to figure out. So we're just going to replace the negative 226W with a negative 225 and a negative 1. So I've got 9W squared. I want to put the negative 1 first. Um, minus W, just because it looks nice that way. Oh, I, I'm kind of running out of space. So I'm going to just move everybody over. I'm going to try to move everybody over just a little bit. Oops. There we go. Close enough. Uh, minus W um, uh, plus a negative 225W plus 25 equals 0. And the first two become a group. So 9W squared minus W is a group. Plus negative 225W plus 25 is a group. Oops. Equals 0. Really need to move this out of the way, but it's not being all that... Oh, there we go. It's all in a bunch of pieces. Like that. Oh, move over. Okay. And we'll pull out a w, and we have 9w minus 1. We'll pull out a negative 25, and we would have 25 goes into negative 25 um, 9 times, right? Because we multiplied 9 times 25 to get that. So that would be a 9w minus 1. Okay? Um, negative 25 goes into positive 25, negative 1 times. And so what we pull out is one factor, w minus 25. And the repeating 9w minus 1 is the other factor. Now, we weren't solving for w's. We were solving for x's. You'd be incorrect to say the answer is 25 and 1 ninth. So we need to replace. w now with x squared. Okay? We just used the w's for a little while. x squared minus 25 and 9x squared minus 1 equals 0. And both of these are differences of squares. x squared is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square, 1 is a perfect square, and 9x squared is a perfect square. So um, hopefully you're starting to get the hang of factoring perfect squares. I really don't want you to solve using square roots when you could factor um, because there'll be other times where we really need the factors so that we can do something with those factors. And if you haven't been practicing, it gets, it's not as easy as if you practice. And this is so easy. x squared minus 25 is x minus 5, x plus 5. It's the square root of the first minus the square root so the square root of x squared minus the square root of 25 
times the square root of x squared plus the square root of 25. And you can always do your a times, what multiplies to give you a times c, adds to give you b, your factor by grouping to find this as well. But at this point, I kind of wanted to help you um, learn some of these patterns. Square root of 9x squared is 3x, and the square root of 1 is 1. So we've got 3x minus 1, and then we have 3x plus 1. And now we'll just set those equal to 0. So we have our, our solutions here. Uh, x minus 5 is 0, so x equals 5. x plus 5 is equal to 0, so x equals negative 5. 3x minus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to add 1 and divide by 3. x is 1 third. I hope you don't mind if I did that a little faster. And 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. Subtract 1 and divide by 3, so negative 1 third. And there's our four solutions, and we did that actually pretty quickly. We're going to do one more problem, and that's all I'm going to do. So I have 3x cubed minus 16x squared plus 3x plus 10, right? And, well, what method do you think I'm going to use here? Hopefully you said. Division. I'd have to use division here. All right, so let's use our rational root test. So the factors of 10 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10. The factors of 3 are plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 3. So that means our possible solutions we're going to divide one, um, one, positive and negative 1, 2, 5, and 10 by 1 and 3. If we divide by 1, we're just going to get positive and negative 1 and positive and negative 2. They're not going to change. 5 and positive and negative 10. If we divide by 3, we'll have plus or minus 1 third plus or minus two-thirds, plus or minus five-thirds, and, uh, I'll probably squeeze it in here, plus or, no, I can't fit it in, plus or minus ten-thirds, I'll just throw it down here. I only start with fractions if I don't have anything else to use. I try to use the integers first. Um, three, sixteen, three, ten, got a lot of threes there. Um, but three is not a possibility, because it's not a, not a factor of ten. Let's try two. Uh, let's try, let's try positive 2. I got, that ne you got a big negative 16 there. So maybe I want a positive. So we write the coefficients, 3, negative 16, 3, and 10. And we'll pull out a 3. So 3 times 2 will give us 6, and we'll add, we'll get negative 10. I don't think this is a good choice. Negative 10 times 2 is negative 20. That's going to give us negative 17, and that's just so not going to work out for us. All right, so let's try another one, so not 2. I wish I had a pause here. I'll solve it out maybe. <laughs> no, nah, it'd be more fun to solve it with you. Um, let's try a negative 1, positive 1. 3, negative 16, 3, and 10. Bring down the 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Subtract, we have, ne or add, we have negative 13. Ah, that's going to work. 1 times negative 13 is uh, negative 13. Add, we'll get negative 10, and 1 times negative 10 is a negative 10. That's 0. All right, so we found one solution is x equals 1. And now we'll factor 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. So 3 times negative 10 multiplies to, uh, 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. So two numbers that multiply to give us negative 30, but add to give us our b term of negative 13. Well, not 3 and 10, right, because negative 3 times negative 10 will give me positive 30, and I need a, I need a negative number to add to negative 13. How about negative 15? times 2. Negative 15 plus 2. So we're going to keep the, um, so we have 3x squared. We'll um, change the middle term to negative 15x and a positive 2x. 
and the first two become a group, and the second two become a group, and we'll pull out a 3x, and we'll have an x minus 5. Pull out a 2, and we'll have an x minus 5. So factored, we have 3x plus 2, and x minus 5 equals 0. So the last two solutions, 3x plus 2 equals 0, x is negative 2 thirds, and if x minus 5 equals 0, x is 5. And I think those are all the ones I had for us to go over uh, on this little review. Let's see. Oh, I had one more. We'll do this one really quick. I had one more. And the method I'm going to use is factor by grouping. We can do factor by grouping really, really quickly. All right, x cubed plus 20, 2x, 20x squared minus 25x plus 500. Notice how got a lot of fives there. Looks like that would be a good method. First two become a group. Second two become a group. Pull out a common factor. Pull out the x squared. I have an x plus 20. Pull out a common factor, negative 25. And we'll have an x minus, oops, Ah, there's a sign error in this. Darn it, that should be a negative. I wanted this to be nice and factorable. Ah. Okay, one little boo-boo. Let's make that a, shh, don't, don't tell anybody. Make that a negative 500. I made this problem up, and I, have a, I forgot to change the sign on the last one. Um, and so now we would have a plus... And 25 goes into 500. Well, 25 goes into 52 times, goes into 520 times. And we have an x squared minus 25 and an x plus 20 equals 0. x squared minus 25 is factorable. Difference of squares. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25 is 5. So if we have a perfect square minus perfect square, it's the square root minus the square root, and the square root plus the square root. And then, of course, we had that x plus 20 still hanging out. Three solutions, x equals 5, x equals negative 5, and x equals negative 20. Uh, plus 500 wouldn't have been as much fun. So um, it's a minus. You just didn't see it. All right, so hopefully this is uh, making sense to you. You're doing well with this. Um, and I'll see you in class. Have a good day.